Hello everyone, and welcome to another digital presentation from the Discovery Museum's Henry B. DuPont III Planetarium. I'm Elliot Severn, Assistant Director of the Planetarium, and we're going to have another sky show for you today. And so we're starting out facing the west in the afternoon, today on Friday, April 17th, and we're going to fast forward time and watch the sun set. And soon the stars are going to start to come out. And here we are in the western sky after sunset tonight. The local time is 9.23. And just like last week, the first object that you could see come out in the west was this bright point of light right here, which is the planet Venus. And also, we can see our winter constellations, which are setting on the horizon right now. We have Taurus the Bull, Orion the Hunter, Canis Major, and Canis Minor. And just about this time in April is the latest in the year that we can see these winter constellations. And what we're going to look at this week is the northern portion of the sky. So we're going to move over there now. All right, so here we are in the northern sky. And what I want to show you is how to find the north star Polaris. The way you find the north star is first by finding the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is almost straight overhead in the evening at this time of year. It's located right here, and it's supposed to make a shape of a spoon or a ladle in the sky. And we're going to use the Big Dipper to find the North Star. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the last two stars in the spoon of the Big Dipper and we're going to draw an imaginary line between those stars going out of the spoon. And the first bright star we get to is the North Star Polaris. So you draw this imaginary line and that first bright star you get to is the North Star which is also called Polaris. And it just so happens that Polaris is the last star in the handle of the Little Dipper. So here we have the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. And once again, here is how you use that imaginary line to locate the North Star Polaris. The Big Dipper and the Little Dipper are part of larger constellations called Ursa Major and Ursa Minor, which are the Big and the Little Bear. And this is what the bears are imagined to look like. The spoons of each dipper are sort of the back end of each bear. Their bodies go out in front of where the dippers are, and each bear has a big long tail. Now in real life, bears don't have big long tails. In ancient Greek mythology, these constellations were created when gods threw bears up into the sky. However, they were afraid to get bitten by the bears, and so they threw them by their tails. And when they threw them up into the sky, it stretched out their tails and made these constellations into this shape. Other cultures also saw these constellations as bears, and they had other explanations for the grouping of stars behind them. In some Native American cultures, the three stars in the handles of the dippers are thought to be hunters chasing the bears. Ancient Jewish astronomers thought that each bear was only the spoon portion of the dipper, and the three stars behind them were their cubs following them. 
But in modern astronomy, the main reason the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper are so important is because they help us find the North Star. Now, why do we call Polaris the North Star? It has to do with how the Earth is rotating. As the Earth rotates, all stars rise in the east and set in the west. And as the night goes on, it appears that all the stars are rotating around our planet. Now, it just so happens the axis of the Earth is almost exactly in line with the star Polaris. And so as the Earth rotates, as the night progresses, all the stars appear to move throughout the sky except for Polaris, which stays almost in a completely fixed position. And if you have a camera which can do long exposures, if you take a long exposure of this part of the sky, you get star trails that look like this circling around Polaris. So right now, we can very easily use the North Star to find where the North Celestial Pole is. And if you're out at sea on a ship and you're trying to navigate at night, you can find your way using the North Star. If you find the North Star and draw a line directly down from it, you know where North is, and then you can calculate all your cardinal points and directions from there. However, Polaris won't always be our North Star due to a phenomenon called precession. Currently, Earth is spinning on its axis, and its axis is aimed straight at Polaris. But Earth's axis isn't always in this position in space. Over thousands of years, Earth is actually wobbling on its axis. And over the course of thousands of years, it's going to turn away from Polaris. And so we're starting right now, going forward in time. And as you see, as we go forward in thousands of years, the North Celestial Pole is moving further and further away from Polaris. Now we're going to go about 5,000 years into the future, and then we're going to start to rotate the Earth and see if Polaris still stays in its fixed position in the sky. Now we're rotating the Earth, and as you see, Polaris is no longer staying in one place. It's creating a star trail moving around the North Celestial Pole. About 5,000 years in the future, Another star is going to happen to be close to the North Pole, and that is the star Alderamin. And so 5,000 years into the future, we're going to have another North Star in the sky. And now we're going to move time forward again. Now we have no North Star once again. Now, 10,000 years into the future. And as we go further into the future, eventually the star Vega will be close to the North Celestial Pole. That'll be used as the North Star one day. Now, as we get to this part of the circle, we're still moving into the future, but this circle is measuring back in time. So now we're seeing the sky they would have seen 5,000 years ago. The star Thubin was once the North Star. Alright, so we're going to go back to our northern sky at the current date. And what we're going to do now is we're going to have a closer look at Ursa Major. So this is a great time of year to look at Ursa Major because it's almost directly overhead and is a great target for telescopes. Now in and around Ursa Major 
are many interesting galaxies. So right here, just off the end of the handle of the Big Dipper, is a galaxy called M101, the Pinwheel Galaxy. A beautiful object through a telescope. I'm going to show you a picture I took of it just a few weeks ago, and you'll see why they call it the Pinwheel Galaxy. It is a beautiful face-on spiral galaxy, and you can really see the spiral arm structure of it. It's one of the most beautiful galaxies you can see in the night sky. Also close to the Big Dipper in the constellation of Bodies is a beautiful grouping of galaxies called M81 and M82. They're located right about here. And here's a picture I took of them in my backyard through a telescope. So M81 is on the left. It's a beautiful spiral galaxy. M82 is on the right, and it's called the Cigar Galaxy. And you can see why it got that name. And up on the top left is another smaller galaxy called NGC 3307. So many galaxies are located in this part of the sky. And just off the handle of the Big Dipper is another beautiful galaxy called M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, located right about here. It's a very interesting target for telescopes. It's a spiral galaxy that has a dwarf galaxy companion that it's gravitationally interacting with. And so here's an image that I took in my backyard about a month ago as well. So we see what the Big Dipper looks like from Earth, but let's take a look at what it looks like in three-dimensional space. All right, so here's the Big Dipper as it appears from Earth. What we're going to do is we're going to take off from Earth, and we're going to orbit around the stars that make up the Big Dipper. And so we can see the three-dimensional positions of all the stars around it, and we can see how it changes shape as we change our vantage point. Now we're on the other side of the Big Dipper, staring through it back at our solar system. And we're going to come around and land back on the Earth again. And so although it makes a dipper shape here on Earth, its stars are actually different distances from us. And the last thing that we're going to do today is we're actually going to go to the Whirlpool Galaxy and take a look at what it looks like up close. Here we go. Alright, so here we are at the Whirlpool Galaxy, and we can see that its companion galaxy is actually a little bit behind it. It's not right at the bottom like it looks like in pictures. And another thing you might notice is we don't see any stars around it like we saw in the astrophoto. So all the stars that you see in images of it are stars in the foreground from our own galaxy. If you travel there, 
you won't see any stars in the distance. But what I'm going to do now is turn on all the galaxies that surround it. And so it's not alone in space. It's just there are no stars close by that you would see in an image. Now as we fly around the Whirlpool Galaxy, a couple things that you should notice. All these little pink areas are star forming regions. And you can see its nucleus in the center. And as we go in, you can see the three dimensional detail in the lanes of dust in its spiral arms. So that concludes our space tour for today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Stay tuned for another show next week. Everyone have a great week and clear skies.